I run the marketing department here at Art Store Friends. Been doing that for years and years and years now. Um, and I could say, you know, I should probably tell you where this particular rant is coming from, sort of some of the, the background to it, if you like. And Art Store Friends has been at this pretty much almost for a decade now. I'm rounding up a little bit, um, but mind you, it sounds better. I think we have a little bit over like 8,500 customers at this juncture. Um, we study our most successful ones very, very closely. Not only do I have access to everything that they sell, but how things are priced, what marketing sources are driving the results in their business. Um, and you know, you see certain ones that rise all above the top and then you dive in and you're like, what is that person doing? What are they doing differently from everyone else? Uh, how can we extract some intel out of that and try to teach other folks? And so certain patterns emerge, right? Um, and again, the fact that we've been doing this for, for you know almost a decade and some of our customers have been with us for like five or six years now, I've got to watch sort of the trajectory of some of the superstars and like what, what, what has been in common with those folks that continually have their business growing every year uh, significantly more so than the others, right? And so the particular theme that I'm going to be kind of harping on today is just going to be a major one for the rest of 2023. I mean, we are... We are living in such just an absolutely crazy world right now with so much tumult and chaos and what's going on in social media and email open rates and AI. And is that going to kill everything? AI is like artificial intelligence. A bunch of people are freaked out about that. But disclaimer, okay, this topic is a bit of a hot button topic for me. I get a little fired up about it. I'm not going to say I'm going to be yelling, but I might shout a couple of times, okay? Warning there on that one. Uh, you've been warned. And I want to I want to start with a story that's going to take us out of the art world, and I want to go right back into it. So one of my buddy's dads, um, super sharp guy, dropped out of college, guy started business, sell it for hundreds of million dollars, guy, and he's really unique in that he has this like super analytical brain where he like gets down to the core of the problem and asks these amazing questions, and so. Great guy, amazing man, not the flashy kind of wealthy guy, totally gives a bunch of money away, Christian dude, good dude, gets throat cancer, stage four. I know it's a little dark, but just stick with me on this. And if you're a man of means in, in, in his capacity, what do you do? You start doing your research and you find out the three best doctors on the entire planet that treat this particular type of cancer. And so he finds out who those are, he jumps on the plane, he goes and visits these three guys. And being that analytical mind that he had, he asks all three of the doctors independently, he goes, if I was stuck on a desert island and you could only prescribe one thing to me and one thing alone, uh, to help me beat this cancer, what would it be? And unprompted, all three of the doctors answered the exact same way. All three of them said exercise. They said, if I can only prescribe one thing, it would be exercise. So fast forward to today, he, the doctor was in Houston that he picked. He moved to Houston. He underwent uh, treatment for a couple of years. It's 10 years on now, totally healthy, and he now exercises six days a week, right? Surprise that. So why did I tell you that entire story? The, the genius of that question, like what's the one thing? is it gets to the root of the number one thing that you should be focused on. And I, I bring that story up because my whole pitch today is gonna be if there is one thing, one metric that I can like recommend that you guys all focus on that's gonna help you grow your businesses this month, next month, the coming years, the coming decades, like that's a very, very interesting question to ask as it pertains to an art business. And I believe that there is a very clear and obvious answer. And I believe that especially as someone that has spent his life attempting to get attention uh, in the form of being a marketer, which is the biggest struggle that every single solitary one of you guys on this call have. Every one of you guys, every face in every one of these Zoom boxes has a marketing problem. You all want your businesses to grow. You all secretly know that you need to do marketing to make that happen. So it's under this lens that, that I like to frame things that way. Um, so that's what I'm going to get into. That's what I'm going to talk about today. And, you know, what I'm here to argue today is that if there is one thing that I can prescribe to you, okay, it is the number of customers that you acquire per year, the number of customers you acquire per year to your art business, to your photography business. That is no different than the exercise to my father, my buddy's dad's cancer. Okay. It's that important. It's that impactful. And I'm going to get into all of the reasons why that's the case and all the nuances to it. And like, look, beating cancer and or a growing in art business, there's not one thing you do. There's a whole bunch of different things you have to do, right? But the whole point of the exercise is if there's one thing that you should be focusing on that almost no one is focusing on and no one is talking about, well, then, then, then you start working on it. You start figuring it out, right? And what I found is this one thing, the number of customers that you acquire per year 
is honestly the most reflective of the potential revenue of the business in the future years with potential revenue of the business. And as I'm, as I'm going to show you guys, once we wind this question back, once we peel the onion back, you're going you're gonna to all of a sudden have these, ah, you have all kinds of aha moments as a result. And then you go and you start working on these things. So that's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to do. Um, quickly, some programmatic notes. Um, I'm going to go on my rant. After the rant is done, we'll, we'll get into Q&A. Um, if you have a question and you're like, man, I really want to get this question ans asked, asked, answered, answered, um, you asked or answered really there's at the bottom of your zoom window, there's like this little chat button and you guys can click that if you're on a phone, it's, it's kind of behind that little three bar thing. But anyway, you can click that thing. It pops out a box. I can see the box. And so as things are rolling along, you can throw questions in there and I feel like stopping and answering and I might do that. If I don't do that, don't worry. I will see it. I will go and get it. Um, uh, once we get into the Q&A. For those that are watching on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, I will see your questions. You can leave a comment. I'll come back and pick up as many of those as I can uh, throughout the course of the session. So those are the ground rules. And again, if you guys have to bounce, something's coming up, it's work, whatever, uh, don't worry. We will email you the replay or you can just find it on our Facebook page or YouTube because it's streaming there. So, all right. The basics, you guys, remain the basics. There are foundations upon which a successful art photography creative business is built. Some of these things sound cliche. They're not, okay? I have zero shame ever rehashing them and rehashing them often because they are so fundamental to stay focused on and so few do, okay? So, you know, anyone that's been following us for any period of time, you've been listening to the podcast, you hear me go over this on a regular basis, it's because I need the reminder as much as you need the reminder. And I'm, I'm reminded there's this, there's sort of this line and it's, um, or a quote, rather and I don't even know who came up with it so I can't give any credit to who came up with it but it goes principles are many morals are few principles change often and morals never do these are morals what I'm what I'm covering today effectively morals right like they are they are things that just do not ever fundamentally change in an art or photography business and that you need to be reminded of them all the time we all do and when you are you're going to do significantly better as a result of it and so I like covering them number one a successful art photography creative career and really any career is the long game, okay? You really have to have the perspective of how long you're going to be at this. And in this particular industry, creatives, which I will get to in a second, there are sorts of multipliers. And you're gonna be at this for the rest of your lives. And I'm not talking about months and months, I'm talking about years and years, and in most cases, decades and decades. And man, does that sound cliche, it's not. It's not. When you come to terms, when you realize it's not about a good month or a good year or some flash in the pan marketing technique that you figured out um, or working your ass off for two months and then, and then taking a break, pardon my French, it's, it's the revenue that you get today in this business, it's not what's gonna work for, it's not gonna work tomorrow. Everything changes, there's so much like tumult. What, whatever's working for you now might not work for you in a couple of years. And the whole, the whole path to success in this business that I see and I continue to see, it's literally showing up every week, week in, week out, and really working hard on building your business. And you have to show up, you can't take time off, you can't quit. And yet when I talk to artists and photographers, okay, I've, I've run, I don't even, since the pandemic started, three of these things a week, pretty much nonstop incessantly. I have talked to so many artists and so many photographers, every niche imaginable, every corner of this globe practically within reason in English speaking, um, every, every state of their career sold nothing at, at the end. I routinely get people in their 90s that come onto these Zoom calls, which is crazy to me, but see my aforementioned point that you're gonna be at this for the rest of your lives. Creatives don't shut off. It's not like you're like a, you know, a tax attorney and you get to your retirement and you're never gonna look at taxes again. Like you, you're, you're at this for the long haul. And it's very, very important to have that perspective because when you have that perspective, you don't quit, you keep going and you, and you keep working on it. Um, turns out when you work on your marketing and you stop treating your marketing like a new year's resolution, okay? We signed up for that gym membership in January. We're going four days a week, it's going awesome. March comes along and we haven't been once, okay? That is how the vast majority, not you guys mind you, but the vast majority of creatives out there treat their marketing. And, it is so short-sighted when you realize how long you're gonna be at it. And why did I bring this one up? It's important period, it's important at the beginning of the year, absolutely, it's important all the time. But let me, let me sort of nuance it through the lens of why it's so important to acquire new customers, okay? And I'll tell you, 
the bread and butter of this business always has been, always will be, is collectors. It is collectors. What is a collector? A collector, okay, is anyone that will buy multiple pieces from you over the course of your lifetime. You keep creating, you get better, you raise your prices, you keep marketing, they go along for the ride. In many cases, they will be with you for life. It is one of the beautiful things of, it, it, it's nuanced, right? Like there's not that many businesses that have collectors. Art has it, uh, stuffed animals has it, sneakers has it. Like it's, it, it's just hit or miss on which industry, cars to a certain extent. But if you can acquire collectors, it is the 401k of this business, okay? It is the straight up, it is, it is a, you know, with the retirement portion aside, it's the pension of this business. You acquire collectors, they will continue to come back and back and back and buy from you year after year after year. It's a phenomenon of this business. It's just an incredible thing, okay? And so when you realize that, when you realize that, you know, you put yourself out there in the world. You do your marketing, okay? This can be in-person events or it can be digital marketing. You acquire social followers. You acquire emails. You acquire snail mail, if you like. Those followers eventually turn into sales and you acquire customers. Some portion of those, those customers will return and buy again. And after they've bought a couple of times, uh, uh, you have a collector. They are literally with you for life. And it is, it is such a profound thing of this business. And so few people understand it. And I alluded earlier, I made mention of the fact that I've been at this a number of years now. And we've had customers that have been with us for like five and six years. I've got customers, the really, really good ones, that come out with a new series of pieces. And it's 25 pieces that they created. They let their collectors know before they let the public know. And all of the pieces, 70, 80, in some cases, 90% of the pieces are gone. They're all sold before the public even gets to see them. And I look at that and I'm like, whoa, whoa, right? And it all comes down to the fact that they were very good at acquiring customers and they were very good to marketing to these folks in perpetuity. And it doesn't matter when you get started on this game, it is a volume game, okay? The more customers you acquire, the higher a chance you stand at turning that customer into a collector. This is not spoken about enough and quite frankly, it infuriates me because it is the biggest force multiplier that this particular business has. And you know what? It works both ways. If you are increasing the number of customers you acquire, okay, uh, 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 by selling direct, by knowing who purchases your work, your business will grow. If you're increasing the number of customers you acquire and you don't know who those folks are, i.e. selling in a traditional retail art gallery, i.e. selling at any of the online marketplaces, uh, Saatchi, Fine Art America, Redbubble, Etsy, you don't know who your customers are. Your business, you think your business is going great. I've sold X, X, Y amount here or there, but who are those folks? Do you have any idea who they are? Because if you don't, then you're not acquiring collectors. Big, big deal at that point. Big, big deal at that point. Another fundamental. And again, we're on, we're on morals. We're not on principles. These things never change. The easiest customer to get, okay, is the one that you already have. The easiest customer to get is the one that you already have. It is much easier to get someone that has purchased something from you to come back and purchase again than it is to get somebody to come for the first time and purchase. There are only three ways, okay, to grow an art business. Number one, the one that everybody loves to focus on all the time is how do I collect? How do I how do I get new new collectors? I mean, new buyers. How do I acquire new buyers? New customers. New customers. New customers. And that's what everyone fundamentally works at. That is the number one way to grow an art business. The number two way to grow an art of photography business, okay, is increase what we call your AOV, your average order value. That means when I come to your, your shop, you are selling all your paintings for $100, your average order value is $100, okay? Now, you've just decided to raise all your prices to $150, okay? Now, your average order value is $150, right? So that is a way to raise your AOV. Other ways of raising your AOV is I come to you and I buy an original, and then you upsell me a print to go with it, or you upsell me a set of coasters or a calendar or a photo book, whatever. Third way to grow the business is to get repeat business, to get the customers you already have to come back, okay? And that is the easiest customer to get. It is the one that you already have. And, 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 and again, I get it. At this point in the presentation, you're like, okay, this guy just wasted like 12 minutes of ranting uh, to tell me that I need to acquire new customers. Thank you, Captain Obvious, right? I get it. Can I have my 10 minutes back? And it all seems so simple, doesn't it? 
like, oh yeah, I just need to acquire new customers. And yet all the years that I've been working in this industry, all the years that I've seen people teaching and talking about how to grow an art or photography business and the things that they need to be working on, nobody ever seems to talk about the number of customers acquired. They do, and if they do, they're talking about it incorrectly that I'll, that I'll get to in, in just a second. So if I was to ask all of you guys on this call right now, point blank, how many customers did you acquire last year? Does anybody have that data handy? Yeah, okay, fine. If you didn't sell anything, you have that data handy. It's a goose egg. But if you sold like one or two pieces, maybe, maybe it's handy. But for those that actually have like a business that's going, do you have any idea how many new customers you acquired last year? I'll answer for you. No, you don't. Okay, even my customers don't. They tell me like, oh, I'm going to have to pull some data and figure it out. And that's got to change. Okay, it's got to change. Uh, 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 you need to be able to answer that question, right? And in most cases, the number is way too small, okay? And it's, it, it, it not only is the number way too small, it's not getting the focus it needs because no one can even say, hey, how many did I get, right? And yet, what do I hear all the time? Oh, just, I can't tell you. Last year, I was so crazy busy. I had so much going on. Do you have any idea how busy I am? Everyone's so busy. And everyone has so much going on. And everyone talks about how they want to grow their art of photography business, and yet no one can tell me the damn number of customers that they acquired in a given year. And that's fundamentally needs to change. Once you put your focus on the power of this one question and this one metric, your whole business will change. It is the one thing that if you work on it, okay, and you start taking it seriously, and you break down the numbers, which we're going to do in a minute, the score, the score takes care of itself. The score magically takes care of itself. It is amazing when you make this the number one focus and the clarity of your thinking and what I'm about to get into, some of the, some of the ramifications of contemplating this number will, will really shake your tree and it'll boggle your mind a little bit. But let's just work on the numbers. Let's say you had a pretty good year in 22 and you acquired 70 new customers. Great job, by the way, proud of you, well done. Now is 2023, it's time to get aggressive, we need to grow that. And so for 2023, uh, we're gonna apply what we call 10X thinking, okay? The 10X framework. Stated in a line, I, these buzzwords drive me nuts. Shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. So we're doing shoot for the moon 10X thinking. So we're gonna take those 22 customers and we're gonna say, instead, instead of just inquiring, or 70 new customers rather, we're gonna, we're gonna times it by 10, multiply it by 10. That means you need to acquire 700 customers in 2023. Okay, 700 customers, all right. It's a big number, it's a little scary, but let's break things down, let's see where we land. Let's break it down month by month. So that's 58 customers a month. 1.87 uh, 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 per day, so let's round that up to two customers a day, right? Two customers a day. Everybody in this call right now is like two customers a day. What is this guy smoking? What the hell is he talking about two customers a day? Is he out of his damn mind? I'll get to it, okay, I'll get to it. Let me peel it back. I know it sounds terrifying, all right? Um, once we look at that number and we're like, how are we gonna achieve that? That sounds daunting, that sounds crazy. Shooting for the moon, this guy's shooting for Mars, he's lost his marbles, right? But once we start breaking the thing down and really truly trying to solve for it, you start to realize a few things. Yes, we're playing the long game. Yes, we realize the only thing that matters is acquiring new customers, right? Just track with me on this. Uh, yes, we realize that the easiest customer to get is the one that we already have, okay? Then we start to work backwards from our goal, two customers a day. And we start to realize some things, okay? We start to realize some things. Number one, uh, uh, we're gonna have to have a range of pricing because if we're sitting on this call and we're like, uh, my original started $1,500, dude, there's no way I'm selling two of those a day. You definitely are not going to be selling two of those a day. There's probably 1% of artists in the world, not even that point one, okay, that, that are doing that, but that's okay. You realize I need to have a range of pricing. And then you realize, okay, I need to figure out how to start solving for how I'm gonna have a range of pricing. Specifically, I need prices from zero to $100, I need prices from 100 to 1,000, and I need pricing over 1,000. Okay, let's just keep that as mass right now. Let's not even go down the rabbit hole of what that pretends, okay? But we need to have it, all right? We need to have that price range such that any time that we do marketing and we attract somebody into our ecosystem, we have the ability to acquire a customer. This whole talk is on the number of customers you acquire. The number of customers you acquire is not, it's not likes on social media, okay? It's not shares on social media. It's not people telling you you're awesome. It's not followers. It's not fans. And it's not even people on your email list. The only thing acquiring a customer is a transaction happened. Money exchanged hands, right? And so when you realize that, you're like, 
Oh yeah, I'd better have a range of pricing. Okay. Have you walked into have you, how many stores have you walked into where there's only stuff priced at fifteen hundred dollars and up, right, or a thousand dollars and up, and that's it? It's like you, you, you contemplate your store being a a a, a, a convenience store, which is maybe a, a lousy example because you guys are all hoity toity artists and you're like convenience store. But how many aisles does your store have in it, right? Stands to reason if you have a few extra aisles in your store and things on those shelves, you're going to be acquiring new customers, right? So. You realize why POD is one of the biggest godsends to this particular industry. What is POD? It stands in, it's in short, for print on demand. It means you can create originals and then you can offer prints. Instantaneously, you go from having one original to now you potentially have your work on five, six, seven different media types, all these different sizes. You've gone from a couple of products in your store to thousands. Do you know what that costs you? Absolutely nothing. That is why POD is so great. You have to have no inventory. There are no minimums. You are able to offer your work on all of these various different media types without coming out of pocket a dime. That is a fundamental game changer, okay? You don't have to have some sort of conversation with your significant other explaining them that corner of the garage is now gonna be stacked three high with three pallets of your artwork. No, you get an order, it gets printed, it gets shipped, you touch nothing. So POD, very important. It's not gonna be about POD. But not only can we do POD, we can do POD with merchandise as well, okay? This is also fundamentally a game changer. The fact that like, you know, and I've been in this industry a long time, like I remember back in the days that if you wanted to do a calendar, you had to order a thousand calendars and you better hope you sold them, otherwise you got a whole lot of kindling left because nobody wants a 2013 calendar in 2023, right? So those days are gone. You can now do it with merch as well. And there is a myriad of merch choices. It's why we offer as a business at our storefronts and coasters, Photo books, yoga mats, I got a bunch of it over here. I'm looking at it, pillows, mugs, all kinds of things. I get some pushback sometimes, okay, from people. Merch, I'm not selling that schlocky merch. Why would I have that? That's gonna cheapen me out. That's gonna make me look like an idiot. Let me know the last time any of you went into a museum that didn't have a gift shop. Oh wait, tell me which one, right? If Van goes on the wall and they can be selling merch, you somehow think that it's gonna ruin you, your brand, your image. Give me a break. So says everyone that has a hobby and not a business, okay? No one's saying what the merch needs to be, and quite frankly, I don't care. You need things that are non-wall art related. And here's where I get myself in all kinds of trouble, but I'm gonna come out and say it, because I don't care. I like telling the truth. Pardon my French, I'm gonna swear on this one. Wall art is a shitty business. I'm gonna say it again for effect. Wall art is a shitty business. Do you want to know why? Because not everybody is ready for a piece of wall art today. They're not ready right now. They might not be ready for three months, six months, a year. So that means you're out there marketing, okay? You are getting people sucked into your ecosystem. I'm like, wow, this person is creative. This is amazing. Let me see what they have on offer. All you have is wall art. I'm not ready to buy wall art right now. I just left. Do you know what the odds of me coming back and seeing you ever again are? Not very good. Okay, now what happens when you have non-wall art as a part of your lineup? Now what happens if you have non-wall art as a part of your lineup and you realize that the only metric that matters is the number of customers that you acquire, okay? I told you there's gonna be a little shouting, I get fired up about this. What happens is, I come to your, where, come to your world, your creative world, however it is, however I got in there. Instagram, I in-person show, you had a garage sale, I didn't care. I like what this person does creatively. I'm not ready to buy some wall art right now, what do they have? and you've got it, and again, I don't care what it is. Mugs, coasters, painted spoons, photo books, whatever. I've seen all kinds of creative things. All of a sudden, I leave, okay, with something in my hot little hand, and you leave with my credit card details, my name, and my email address. You just acquired a customer. You just acquired a customer. And what do we know about customers? The easiest one to get is the one that you already have. What do we know about customers? Each customer has the potential now to turn into a collector. You never know who those ones are gonna be. So that's why it comes down to how many customers you acquire, okay? How many customers you acquire that is the most predictive thing about where your business is gonna go. And there are so many artists and so many photographers that glance over this, gloss over this, it's not that important. What are you talking about? I don't need to do that. But the rules are the rules, you guys. Wall art is a shitty business. Not everyone is ready to buy wall art all the time. And so when you round out your lineup and you have some of these other things in that lineup, again, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you have the price range, zero to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 plus, non-wall art is a part of it. You put yourself in a position 
to be, to be so much more effective at acquiring customers, right? I love fishing, and so I love the fishing analogy. You have a boat, and I have a boat. And we're both in the same harbor. I live in Newport Beach, so we're in the harbor in Newport. And the boat is the exact same size. The boat is the two captains that are near identical. They know the waters. You get on your boat, and you take off. I get on my boat. We get out to sea. On your boat is just a fishing line. That's it. You've got a couple fishing lines, and that's your wall art. On my boat are fishing lines because I've got wall art too, but I've also got lobster traps. I've got crab traps. I've got harpoons. I've got nets. I've got all kinds of things, and what it's going to end up happening is we're going to keep going fishing, the two of us. Keep going fishing. Keep going fishing. That's all your marketing. And because I have all of those abilities, I'm going to be coming back with more seafood every single solitary day than you are, right? I'm going to have more money to pay my captain, more money to pay for the gas, and more money to put in my back pocket. And it's just that simple. And it's, it, and it's so glossed over by most people. Most people do not understand how important it is. And once you realize this, you realize, like, there's two customers a day. There's no way I'd be able to do that. And then you make a run of stickers. 2,000 of them, and then you go do a show somewhere, and you sell 1,000 of those stickers in one weekend. Well, guess what? You just did it. That wasn't that difficult, right? Now, within reason, the stickers is a bad analogy because everyone's like, hey, here's a dollar. I'll take your sticker. No, no, no. I need that contact info, right? Because I need to be able to market to you in the future. But you realize the two customer a day metric is not so daunting when you have this range of different products that you can sell, right, in all these various different capacities. And I'm, and I'm just struck and I'm just blown away. Like, it, it, the reason I get so infuriated is one of the things that I like to do is like, I'm a huge tech nerd, obviously, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Reddit. It's a website, I don't know if you know what it is. You post things, you upload them, you download them. There's communities on there for artists, and there's one in particular that I go on all the time, and I like kind of just giving advice because I can tell it's a bunch of like 20-year-old kids. And they're constantly telling me all the reasons why you know, they're just going to sell wall art and they're, they want to be perceived as a fine artist and they would never sell these inexpensive items or these items that are not wall art. And, you know, if somebody comes and they don't want my wall art, I'm just going to let them go. And I'm like, oh, oh, you guys, you guys, I'm talking to 70 and 80 year olds on a regular basis on these Zoom calls. And they're like, I was in business at the shows and theirs for 20 years. I sold so much stuff. And I was like, did you keep records on any of those people? And they're like, no, I didn't. None of us did back then. And it breaks my heart. Because when you realize number of customers acquired per year, times years, in which there's 5, 10, 15, 20, many decades for some of you, that is how you build a significant art business. That is how you build a business in which you're in control of everything. That is how you build a business when you come out with new stuff and you don't have to do anything and 60% of it is just sold. And no one talks about that and no one optimizes towards that. And once you start doing it, you realize you put yourself on the path to getting there. You put yourself on the path to getting there. So my hope is that all of you will consider this point. All of you will let it sink in. All of you will attempt to figure out how you can make 2023 a year in which you prioritize customer acquisition, in which you prioritize customer acquisition however you can get them in the door. The minute a transaction happens is fundamentally different than a social media follower, a fan, and email. Don't get me wrong. Email is very important. So it's, it's a step in the direction. But when you focus your business on that, game over. It's a game over. So we'll go into Q and A. Um, that's the end of my rant. And how do we do it? For the brave ones that have their cameras on, if you raise your hand, I will usually see it, uh, and I can say, "Okay, this person's up. Can I bring them in?" Um, for everyone else at the bottom of your Zoom window, yep, I got you, Greg. You'll be first. At the bottom of your Zoom window, there's this little smiley face thing. You see it? It says reactions. If you click that, there's a way to raise your hand, digitally speaking, and that kind of gives me a cue. Yep, my hoop, my just got it. That'll let, me, that'll, that'll let me know, hey, you have a question, and it makes it a little bit easier on me, and I can just unmute you one at a time. Um, if you're on the call and you don't want to turn your camera on, you don't have to turn your camera on, okay? I hate video. You would never see my face if it was up to me. Uh, that's my job, so I have to do it. So you can ask via audio. You can even throw your questions into the tech, into the chat, right? I, I do see those. For instance, Joseph, yes, you can do POD for other items. You know, if you sign up with us, we do it in a bunch of different places, but there's other, there's other places um, that you can do it as well. So I will get into all of these questions in good measure. And Greg, you're up. You're kicking us off. Uh, have at it. Yes, well, ago you were indicating uh, we own the site. Uh, yes. Building this customer base, we're going to have uh, customer information, uh, credit card information. That's mm -hmm. where you caught me right there. 
what processing or payment processing system is connected with this? I mean, obviously, Stripe and Stripe, Stripe and PayPal, pretty... Stripe and PayPal. And so it's Stripe okay. is like a, I don't even know now, like a $35 billion company. It's pretty much what everybody uses to, to process transactions online. But then you can also do PayPal as well. And, it, and, and it's less about like the credit card. You don't retain the credit card information. It doesn't even ever come into your hands at all. Stripe is the only one that has it. But that, that's not where I was going with it is everything changes when a transaction happens, right? It, and, and that's the fundamental thing where, where I say like when you acquire the customer, all you really care about is you have a way to market to them in the future, right? Which is why that email address is, is so important. But also mathematically, the customers, you know, you acquire the customers, the more of them that are, the more that turn into a second sale, the more that turn into a third sale, the more that turn into a fourth sale. So that's, that's, that was the point about the, the, the credit card details, not actually like having okay. those, you know, go to Vegas. You do. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. All right. I'm going to, I forgot because you didn't raise your hand. Hold on. Here, I'll meet you. Uh, okay. I'm going to get this. I gotta, I'm, I'm sounding this. I'm sounding your name out. I think it's Madamita. I'm going Madamita. You have to let me know though if I hacked it. And you'll have to unmute. Yep, gotcha. Are you there? Ah, so you're having audio issues because you're unmuted. Um, what you should do is if you go in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see I'm kind of doing it on my screen here. There's a little up arrow on this thing and, and select a different mic. Um, I'm going to go to the next question. We'll see if that fixes it, and then I'll come back and circle back. Sabrina, you're up next. Go ahead. And then it'll be you, Kesu. Hello there. Hey, how's it going? Um, so the first part of my question was um, Greg brought up the, the website part. Mm -hmm. uh, I missed the first part of the seminar, mm -hmm. so I was actually curious as to how your service actually worked. Yes. And now that um, there's a mention of a website, I have a question based off of that mm -hmm. as well. So what if um, like I have an op, um, a site mm -hmm. where, of course, I offer my um, original prints and some merchandise? Mm -hmm. How does that work with your site? Do you um, combine it with what you offer or do you make something totally different? Yeah, it'd be totally different than new. You'd get rid of that one and then you'd use ours. But I mean, again, you know, you wouldn't be here if it was working for you. Right. So like, what are you really missing out on? <laughs> no, nothing. Um, you didn't, you didn't, uh, mi you didn't miss anything at the top of it though. Like we do, we do different sessions and sometimes we do a session where we walk you through the software and the marketing and the education and everything that we get. That's not this one. We call that one the demo process. And so the best thing to do is fill out a form on our website and they'll contact you and schedule a zoom, or you can do one of the group ones. It's kind of like this today's session. I just come on and rant every once in a while with the idea like, you know, you guys are all curious and you're like, do these people even know what the hell they're talking about? And the, the hope with this session is like, oh, okay, these guys are interesting enough. Maybe I should look at a demo. So that's, that's what today's is all about. Got it. All right. Thank you, Serena. Okay. Madam Ita, I'm coming back. I really want to know if I'm pronouncing that correctly now. Are you there? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, success. I love it when it works Great. out. Wait, okay, so how do I pronounce your name? Did I get it right? You did right. Uh, uh, so you are, uh, on you it are today. smart. <laughs> so uh, Patrick, basically, yeah. uh, I recently developed the, uh, you know, interest for making art and mm -hmm. I'm doing so well, maybe it's God gifted that people are asking me to sell it. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, you know, when uh, friends say how much you want to charge, because I have never intention to sell it, I have no idea how to do it. Uh, but then I saw your and I thought, okay, I do a lot of donation and stuff. Though I uh, work as a CISO in a company, probably financially, originally, I don't need anything. But I want to see the potential in me and use that money for the betterment of society and everything. And that's how I intend to do it. Now, my uh, question is, how can you help? I see that you guys can set up, um, you, you know, uh, um, you know, the, the, my uh, mm -hmm. website and do this thing. But I have no idea how end-to-end -end work, how shipping will work, what are my uh, responsibilities, uh, how what how much I have to pay upfront, when I will start earning money, all those things. So if you can uh, connect me to one of your re representative for the demo, mm -hmm. I would be more than happy if you cannot answer all of them together now. Yep, and I definitely can. I mean, I don't, I don't even, I'd stay out of their world. I don't even know all the details. I'm going to make a note. I'm going to have somebody email you after the fact. 
and I will let them know I nailed the pronunciation first time. I'm really pleased with myself on that. <laughs> Um, but I'll have somebody reach out via email afterwards and then they can schedule it up or alternatively, like they're going to run one, I think on Wednesday and on Friday. So you can, oh. you can, you can do it like in the, in the group scenario that's easier and it's more comfortable, but it's kind of fun to have a one-on-one -on -one sometimes. Um, but yeah, they can walk you through the, all the bells and the whistles about everything that we do. It's, it's a lot, okay. right? Cause we're sort of part website company and then we're part, you know, postgraduate university that just teaches art and photography, business and marketing all year long, which is the number one thing you guys all need. You think you need a website. You don't need a website. I mean, yeah, you have to have one. But you, what you really need is the education on how to grow the doggone thing. And that's mm. sort of our secret sauce. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And good work on the on the switching mics. I love it. All right, Kessie, you're up. Did I get your name right? Yes, you did. Awesome. Um, Hello, everyone. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Kesu. Um, I have a bunch of questions I noted down. I don't know if we'll have time for all of them. Mm -hmm. So I have questions regarding branding and sales. And yes. then I have technical questions about your website and marketing program. Okay. So uh, what are you equipped to handle right now? <laughs> well, let's 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 start start with the brand. Give them to me one at a time. Start with the branding. What's the branding? Okay. All right. So branding, uh, I I posted one on the chat. It was because uh, you talked about, you know, how not selling on Etsy and Sachi art, uh, you know, how that's not a great idea because you don't get the metrics. But how about selling directly on the social media channels? Like oh, yeah, Facebook yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 100 percent. And 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 don't don't mistake the um, not selling on the others. Like. Number one, I have never met a revenue source for a business that I don't like. Okay, as long as it's legal. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone that's selling on those places and you have decent income coming in, that's fantastic. That's wonderful. I'm not saying necessarily to stop doing that. What I'm saying is, is that you can't do it in lieu of selling directly and knowing who your knowing who your customers are. It's not an either or. It's both, right? Like you know, I'm right. not anti gallery per se, and I'm not anti Etsy or anti any of those things. Like if you can get those things working, fantastic. They're really low odds to get working. I'm just saying you have to be selling direct so that you know who purchases from you so you can market to them and then you can get them to come back, right? Like that's the whole ball game. But you know, we get a ton of people that are like, well, you know, I'm selling really well in a gallery or I'm selling really well on one of these other ones. And you know, it's, it, it's not paying all my bills, but it's, but it's nice. It's like, I don't tell them shut that down. Like absolutely not shut that down. Keep that going. Just continue working over here on building your own thing, right? Because you never know what's gonna happen to this thing over here. The whole thing could get shut down. But yes, we teach you all year long how to market on Facebook, how to market on Instagram, how to email market, how they all work together, how to run live art shows on Facebook, how to run live art shows on Instagram and everything in between. So, you know, fun fundamentally marketing, it's go back to the fishing analogy. We don't get to decide where the fish are, right? The fish are where the fish are. It's our job to get in the boat and drive to where the fish are. I hate Facebook. I hate Instagram. I'm streaming on it. I shouldn't say that. It probably shut me down. But I'm contrarian enough to know that that's where the fish are. I've got to go where the fish are, and so I go where the fish are, right? And 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 as artists, as photographers, creatives trying to grow a business, like we all have to be doing that too, right? So that's that's what I would say. So well, this is coming from someone like I don't have social media. And yeah. I stay away from it. So, but now that I want to start selling my art and marketing, you need it. I know that I would have to go to social media Absolutely. to market it. Absolutely. So then should I also have the option for them, for customers to buy directly on Instagram or should I not dilute, you know, the metrics and just like have them come to the website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the answer to that question is you don't ever want them on, to buy on Instagram. You want them to buy on your website, but you know, set up an Instagram okay. shop. I, we don't recommend that to any of our customers because it's just constantly changes right like one of the okay. one of the things that we do fundamentally that's so important is that we we fix your shiny object syndrome we fix everyone's shiny object syndrome because what's beautiful is i get to log into a dashboard of 8500 customers and i get to go and look at their analytics and look at their data and i'd be like okay we sold 100 million dollars worth of art we have people that sold a million dollars a year i go in and i look at their stats and i look at things and like do I see any traffic from Pinterest to any of these sites that are actually turning into sales? And the answer is no. So you don't need to be on that shiny object. If you like Pinterest, go and make some little vision boards and do whatever you do on there. But that is a hobby. That is for you. That is not for fundamentally growing your art business, right? And we can make a bunch of different calls like that. And so, you know, I, I sometimes go as far to say, like, some of the most important part of our marketing advice is what you can ignore. 
right? Because it's a shiny object, because it's not, de it's not delivering any meaningful business results for anyone we have on the stack, right? So that's, that's, that's how I would say it, and that's how I go about it. Okay. Um, can I list my other question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so with prints, uh, what are your thoughts on limited ed edition versus open ended prints? Oh, 100% both. So, yeah, 100% both. I, in, in a perfect so. world, now obviously there's, there's a little bit of nuance here. I love everyone to offer open edition prints, limited edition prints, do commissions, and also do originals, right? Because what it allows you to do is it allows you to capture the entire range of price points very, very easily, right? Uh, for instance, $100 and below, small paper prints, and the aforementioned merchandise, whatever you choose. You get into 100 to 1,000. You have you know, your various different prints, different media types, different sizes. Maybe at the high end of the 1,000 range, you start getting into your limited editions, and then over 1,000, you get into your originals, right? Now, that's a simplistic. There's a little bit of variance depending on what you do, but that instantaneously stretches you out and gives you the ability to, to tick all of those boxes, right? Um, and, and, and to do all that. So that's how it goes. But you're, I can tell you're super early on in it, and I can tell you have a super analytical brain, and I can tell you you don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. you got to just get started. you got to just get started. Okay. Yeah. Don't, yeah. over, don't overthink it early on. Your only, your only okay. job right now in the short I'm, term. I'm just trying to, uh, like, I'm trying to plan. Oh, I know, I, I know you are. Outlet. I know you are. I know you are. Um, and so then that's why I have all these questions, like, you know, when, like, I would post other artists' work when I go to art exhibitions, you mm -hmm. know, people who work are, like, engaging with the community. But then I had questions like, does that, you know, because your feed should be your magazine. Mm -hmm. And when you put other people to work on it, does that confuse potential customers? Yeah. Don't worry. Don't, you don't need to worry about any of that. Don't worry about any of that. Take the planning document, throw it out the window. You don't need that either. It's like uh, Mike Tyson, the famous boxer, is like, you know, everyone's got a plan until they get hit in the face is his line. Right. And, that, and that's what it is early on. Like early on, you're solving all these problems that you don't know if they're problems. You don't know if they'll ever be problems. And you got to just take it one step at a time. In the very near short term, you need to sell as much work as possible. Have you sold work already? Two people not named mom, dad, brother, sister, family, friends. No, I've sold, but only in like local art fairs and cafes and stuff like that. Okay, well, that's but how, I haven't sold online. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. So you're, 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 you're doing good already. Um, you need to get the online presence. You need to get the social presence. You need to start marketing consistently. And then you need to learn how to market and, and run sales, all of which we'll teach you. Okay. Get, get a demo for sure. We can help you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll ask the other question later. Yeah. I guess I know other people are waiting. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Okay. It's going to go Aaron, Leonardo, and then Alexander. Aaron, you're up next. All right. Thank you, Patrick, very yeah. much. This is very Dude, what are you rocking? I... That thing looks so comfortable. Uh, it's, a, it's a dashiki. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's, I live in Mexico, so it's like uh, like bright bright colors and plants and shit. Yeah, so, where, just just because I love the country so much. Where in Mexico do you live? Uh, Veracruz. Veracruz. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for this. Uh, it's interesting. I get a lot of emails from you guys. Oh, God, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. I don't always look at them, but I was like, oh, I'm actually free to look at something today. So, um, or watch this. And, and you got me You got me kind of thinking about the, the merchandising thing because I've had that general mentality mm -hmm. that, if it's the long game, right? I want to sell my prints and my original art for 10, 15,000. No one's going to ever entertain that, mm -mm. right? Yep. When yep. I'm selling coffee cups and stuff. So it's this kind of balance. But now I'm like, okay, it's got me thinking, how can I find merchandise that still is not like cheap, but that still fits my brand and my idea? So you got me thinking. I appreciate that. But yeah, it's, 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 re it's really, really important. And like all of it's just maths. That's it, right? And, and, and the point is, when I say it's just mass, it's binary. It's zero and ones. There is zero room for emotion in it. And the problem is, is that we all put our emotion in it, and it just clogs and befuddles the entire thing, right? Like, you yeah, know, I just yeah. told, was it Cashew? I'm so bad with names. It started with a K. The guy I was just talking about. You know, I just told her to throw out her plan, right? Because it's like, I, all that's doing is making you make a bunch of bad decisions that are not going to help you grow the business. And I, I don't want you stuck on the nonsense, right? Like, sometimes it takes a couple of first dates. Sometimes it takes a whole bunch of first dates to get to that $15,000 piece sale, right? But what yeah. no, no one understands about the merchandise is like, it's very easy for me to understand. This is a really important point. I spend a ton of money advertising in every digital channel imaginable. Is it effective? Yeah, it is. But do you know what it works? It works when you have your phone in your hand or you have your computer in your hand and you're online. Then I stand a chance at getting at you, right? When you sell some of that inexpensive stuff, 
And let's just say you decided to start selling tote bags, right? And all of a sudden, every time I go to the farmer's market in Vera Cruz, I have your tote bag. And every single solitary day, I am reminded of who? Let me, let, me, let me tell you, dude. And let me tell you that tote bag just hangs yeah. on the wall, right? Somewhere by the front door. Every day, yeah. you are top of mind. I can't do that with an ad, brother. I can't do that with any type of ad. I can't do mm -hmm. that with how many emails I send. And so understand the subtlety of having your art front and center, it's just, which is why I'm, oh, I was like you in the beginning. Like, oh, God, the merch is just so schlocky and so cheap and so stupid. But I look at a calendar no longer as a calendar. I look as a calendar as a Facebook ad that I bolt to the wall in your kitchen 365 days a year. I can't do that otherwise. You can't do that otherwise. They are gone. If that guy's work is amazing. I can't afford 15 grand right now. Gone. You got him a tote bag that they carried for the next three years until all of a sudden they bought their first home yeah. and you got the sale. And it's, yeah. that's why I say it's binary. That's it. It's ones yeah. and zeros. That's it. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's actually, again, it's funny because it's like, on the one hand, I've always resisted the gallery route, right? Because yeah. they want 50% commission. It's Fuck ridiculous. that. Pardon it's my French. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. Yeah, I feel And so. then we have, you know, NFT and all of this awesome stuff that's happened. We're very much in the eye of massive change in the art market. Agreed. And so this old way of like, oh, howdy, howdy. I don't, you know, it's anyway, I'm, I'm really happy I joined this meeting. So uh, just a couple of quick questions I wanted to get your take on. So I Please. have a website, mm -hmm. Shopify. Yep. Uh, wasting money every month right now because yeah. I'm, I'm so busy on other things. I'm not, I haven't sold anything in months. What are you, what are you busy uh, on, Aaron? What are you working on that you're so damn busy on, right? Like, don't, don't make me start drilling in here, right? We're going to, we're going to get into the nonsense, you know, that's, 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 you're, you're right. You're yes. right. You're right. And, and, but so, but I, uh, pretty much I have about, uh, 20 pieces and I have each piece. I offer three formats. Mm -hmm. Um, I do a, and all three are limited edition. One is, uh, on uh, quality paper, but not yep. anything sort of museum quality, yeah, right? Yeah. Nobody cares. All right, and they're like usually about 100 to 120, mm -hmm. right? Next tier is the Hanamula. It's the museum grade quality, right? Yep. The, the, fir the first one is like si editions of 60. The second one is editions of 20, mm -hmm. right? And that's and those are around 250, right? Never sell any of those. Yeah. Uh, and then the third one, I do editions of 10 and they're printed on acrylic glass and they're really fucking dope. And I've yeah. sold some of those, right? Mm -hmm. So I have this middle tier that's doing nothing for me. Yep. And then I've been wondering for a while, I'm like, well, you know, originally how I set up the store was some prints you could only get on glass, some prints you could only get Hanamula. And then I had a client who wanted to buy a piece on the Hanamula, but it didn't have it on the website. So then I like feverishly made all three formats available on each piece. But now I'm realizing if someone's trying to buy my art, why would they buy Hanamula unless they're a collector? Like, they don't give a shit about that. They just want a cool oh, piece. If I, showed you, if I showed you how the sausages are made, you would, uh, in terms of paper and brand names and everything else, talk about brand being powerful. Anyway, um, the range of pricing that you have is important. You're not working on your marketing consistently. You're 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 getting you're getting bogged down in the nonsense details too, which is Hanamula this price point, that price point doesn't matter. That honestly doesn't matter. It's like, do I have do I have the non wall art and do I have the right range? Yes. Am I doing my marketing consistently? That's it. That's it. Until you fix that, nothing is going to change. There's no little pricing hack that's going to change your doggone business in the slightest. Are you selling 100 percent of that stuff in Mexico? Or are you selling it in the United States? Too? No, it's all. I used to live in Europe. I'm American, mm -hmm. so all my clients are from from Europe or from uh, America. Definitely, uh, I only moved here pretty recently. So got it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, you're absolutely. I'm not spending the time on marketing I and yep, on strategizing. I know. Yeah. You know, speaking of that, so I've had some people tell me that it's a waste of money doing Instagram ads. Right? Yes. So that's the main social media that I use. Mm -hmm. I don't use Facebook so much for, you know, but Instagram, and now I'm starting to use YouTube because I also am a video artist. So mm -hmm. I do video stuff as well. But the, the prints is what I want to put more time on to in 2023. I enjoy it the most. Yes. Um, so Instagram ads are worth it. Is, is Mexican food good? Yes. <laughs> is there any variance in between good Mexican food and bad Mexican food? Yes. Huge Ask my there, stomach. There, there's huge, there, yeah. There's huge variance between good Instagram ads and bad Instagram ads, and knowing what I you're know doing. how to make a good Instagram ad because for about 15 years I've been specializing in making good, like that, that. The funny thing about it, Patrick, is literally like I've been working in the music industry making really weird, interesting videos that mm -hmm. will get your attention. I've been doing it forever. Yeah. And it's just about trying to do it for myself. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like yes. it's like take the you have, time. You have a, you have a huge myself. you have a huge leg up, but on Instagram there's yeah. a thing called targeting. On Instagram, in order like no artist makes it and paid traffic, 
unless they have my aforementioned range of pricing, okay? No chance, zero chance, anyone makes it. And then you have to start with warm audiences first, and then you have to move, you, you, you essentially, in order to make paid traffic work, you need, you need to be marketing consistently all year long. You need to be having sales when the time is right. You need to be able to afford to lose money on a customer in the short term and make money on them in the long term. And you need to have that whole system in place. Otherwise, the 11th commandment is thou shall not boost posts, okay? Go out in your backyard and bet a cruise and light that money on fire because you're gonna get the same result. And don't tell me, oh yeah, it's great. I boosted that post for $75, got 1,200 likes. There's no button on the ATM machine for likes. There never has been, there never will be, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I was getting at. So the boosting a post on Instagram. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Okay, wonderful to know because yeah, I, I haven't in a long time. It's been over a year. Don't, but just, I just make reels. Like, and I love what you said earlier. Yeah. Like my ego wants more likes, yes. but likes do not equate. No. Like I got two and a half thousand Instagram followers. Very few of them buy my fucking art. Exactly right. So, exactly. you know. Over, <laughs> what, like, you, what you want to over-index on right now, which is great because it's you can make it, you understand aspect ratios and you know how to drive a non-linear editor. You can, you can make Instagram reels and don't put the music and use the trendy music that they have and watch what happens. That's, that's a, yeah. that's a, that's a quick route right now to growing followers. But yeah, you, you need to sign up. We can help you significantly, but you're going to have to put in the work. Okay. But to be honest, right, it'll, cool. it'll, it'll help you on both businesses. It'll help you on the other business too. You'd be surprised. One, one last thing. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, yeah, yeah. steamroll the, the whole, the no, whole thing, but you just said a second ago. So I've been doing reels pretty consistently lately on Instagram mm -hmm. and I mix and match. Sometimes I will use, somewhat popular music mm -hmm. right because i feel like there's a way that maybe that'll lead to more views and more you know again mm -hmm. my fundamental problem is eyes on my work right yes. which again marketing things can fix yes. um yes. but but uh uh what about i also have to use original music from my friends that make music yeah that's a, that's a, that's okay too that's okay too it's okay. just okay you know i i it's hate been... i hate recommending like the little short-term arbitrage fancy trick right because it works for like a very short term and then it goes away and it's annoying and reels on a macro are sort of that way right now because Instagram is so terrified that TikTok is going to eat their lunch. My hope is that TikTok gets banned by the U.S. government because I don't like what they're doing. And then it's Instagram is going to be right back to saying <laughs> reels. We don't care about reels. We're going right back to where we were, right? And and the whole point with reels is they're giving you they're giving you free impressions. They're showing your stuff to people that are not following you, which was never happening. Yeah, which before. I only learned a couple months ago. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like yeah. Yeah. So you could you could you could still grow a huge following. You can mix it up a little bit, but the trend in music tends to make it go further. But yeah, if you have that video skill set, I would I would be I would be leveraging it heavy. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. In the future I want to hear what, what what you're doing down at Air Cruise. I think I think if things continue to go sideways, everyone's like moving out of California because it's so crazy here. And I'm like, I'm not going to California. I'm not going to Texas or somewhere else. I'm going south. I, I just love Mexico that much. All right, Leonardo, you're up. Hello, hello, um, Patrick. Yeah. Howdy. Uh, we'll get to the point, but first let me say this is absolute gold. I uh, really appreciate this. And oh, thanks for saying all that. All the man. other questions have been um, just, I'll, I'll choose myself as a, uh, I've been doing art all my life, but mm -hmm. now I'm committing to it. Good. As per your intro, you know, it's going to, I'm in for the long haul. Yeah. I'm balls in. Excuse my French. Yes. Um, I've, been, I've been swearing the, too. You're all good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just uh, basically, my question regards the first is the those two questions. Hopefully we have time for them. First one is incorporating in-person marketing. And since I'm pretty new to this marketing and the business side of things, mm -hmm. there's all this info coming from all sides. So oh, yeah. where to start is the first thing. Um, and so how does the in-person marketing fit in? That's the first one. Mm -hmm. And the second question would be um, for your service in particular. I don't have a solid body of work, like very distinct yet. Yeah. So I'm in the process of making like that impression stronger. Mm -hmm. um, so is that? Let me just throw, let me just throw, let me just throw that out the window right now. Doesn't matter. You can start yeah. with one. Okay. You can start with one piece, and it's it's very hard to hear me say that and not take it cynically and say like, oh, this guy just wants this guy to sign up, right? He just wants some money. I don't care if you sign up with us. I don't want anyone using the excuse. I'll just yeah. get started when, right? and insert right, whatever right. bullshit you want in there. Because what ends up <laughs> happening is the days turn into weeks, turn into months. How's that art business coming? Truth is nothing's changed, right? Like a lot of times Absolutely. too, like you're like, okay, I've got to create this body of work in order for me to launch. And what you're saying is, I know best what the market wants. And so I'm gonna create this initial body of work and then I'm gonna go start working on it. 
Well, what if you're going to create nine pieces that all look the same and you take that first piece to market and you realize nobody wants that instantaneously, you're working on something else, right? So mm -hmm. working in a vacuum without the feedback is not a recipe for success ever. Um, you know, you want to get the work in front of eyeballs as soon as possible. And I, I use this line all the time. People that have been on here before, like, stop saying it. But Pablo Picasso, when he died, had 45,000 unsold works in his inventory. Do you know what happened a whole lot of times? Pablo Picasso mm -hmm. picked up his bow, picked up the narrow, drew it back, aimed for the target, and missed. It went into the neighbor's yard. Do you know what he did? He's like, I'm not shooting that one anymore. And then he went and did another one. And then he went and did another one. And then he went and did another one until he realized, okay, boom, this is selling. I'm on to something. Doom, 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 right? And they don't ever teach stuff right. like that in art school, right? Like, you can and should fall flat on your face and fail miserably, okay? That doesn't mean that you're a crappy artist or a photographer. It just means you created something that the market doesn't want, okay? Get over it. It happens to all of us. You know how many of my marketing messages have bombed? The majority of them, right? <laughs> and so you realize that and you give yourself permission to fail miserably, right? And you also realize like, yeah. you know, one of the things that we're constantly teaching our customers is like, I've got so many different customers that, that come in and they have a business that's doing okay, but it's not mapping to the revenue expectations. It's like year one, they sold 2,500 bucks. And year two, they sold like 6,500 bucks. And year three, they're like, this, this thing's doing 10 grand a year for me, I'm over it, right? And what we teach them to do is try some new styles, what we call pivot, right? And like mm -hmm. whatever analogy you want to use, like if you're going to be the monkey in a tree, hold on to that branch that yielded you the 10 grand in revenue, but go exploratory to some other branches with the other hands, right? You might get a firmer one. No one ever, no one like some of my most successful customers, aside from a few that like hit their hit their niche and they're just in their niche and that's it. They're constantly trying new things. Picasso constantly tried new things. A lot of people did. And yeah. it's like, you don't know, you'll never find the home run if you don't take the at bats. Too many analogies, but it's true. It's absolutely true. On that note, does the how much mentorship, if you call it that, does the service offer non stop with regards to non stop. To that? There's sessions like this every single solitary week internally as well as a whole bunch of other stuff, like the whole emotional support system, which is pretty much the biggest deal of the whole thing. <laughs> I'm serious. The, 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 you know, the support, like, you know, telling people to throw away their list and saying, like, stop focusing on that and say, like, stop whining and complaining, okay? This is a roller coaster. Everyone is down here at some point in time. You'll be back up here. Keep working, right? It's, it's, it's really hard to make it in this business. It's really hard because everyone's alone for the most part, right? It's not like you're, yes. you know, like a group of engineers trying to solve like a problem and like someone's having a bad day when someone's having a good day, right? Like it's lonely as hell sometimes. And the encouragement, like the emotional and like mental keep going and like, you know, other customers, peers being like, dude, I've been there. Don't worry. Keep grinding. It gets better, right? Because everyone quits like right at the point when things are going to start taking off and going. And, and you know, right. when you quit, then you don't get the next little win, which sometimes is just one little sale. And that one sale like fills up the emotional reservoir, right? And then gives you the, gives you the energy you need to keep going and going and going. So the, the emotional part about it is just, it's huge. It's a huge part about it. Great. Um, and so then in terms of the um, in-person marketing and events, do you have anything to say about that? How that ties into... Just yeah, so your, your I would plan. so what what I would say in a macro, okay, and most people don't like hearing this, but again, I have way I have access to way more data than all of you, so somebody try and call bullshit on me. You know how everyone <laughs> uses like the term the balanced diet? Like mm -hmm. I think like the balanced art marketing is doing everything you can digitally, right? And let's social media marketing, capturing emails, doing giveaways, running sales, email marketing, everything you can do in the socials. Part of a balanced diet is in person events. And if I could like start out and say to like, you know, my 20 year old self, let's just say I was trying to make it as a photographer, my 20 year old self, I would be like, dude, in your 20s, do 75 shows a year and do 75 shows a year for 10 years, 20 years even until you hit 40 and you're like, I'm so sick and tired of being on my feet and being in this booth all day and loading up the car and driving there and paying the hotel fee and eating crappy food and coming back. And the reason is, is that the in-person fairs and shows offers such a fantastic way to have real conversations with real people. And then when you know how to properly market them, okay, which I mean, I have like a no joke, it will take you an hour and 25 minute to read get tactical guide on how you rock a show or there. Okay, I'm talking on steroids. It's like very, very impressive. I, I think I'll send it I send it to you in the email, you should read it. It's insane. Yeah. It takes me an hour just to read it like for a podcast. Um, the amount of leads that you can acquire doing that are really quite significant, right? 
like we'll have customers that will go and do an in-person show and gather like five or 600 email addresses in one of them, right? That's pretty hard to do in a digital context. And so the balanced diet is the both of them year in, year out. Now, most people don't want to do the in-person fairs and shows. Some people love them. I sort of think like if you can throw in as many as you can throw in in terms of what your body can handle, really, because it's like, you know, the body, like it, it's a lot, right? Like you're loading up the car, you're unloading the car, you have to have a booth, you're on your feet for eight hours. It's on a Saturday when you want to be hanging out with your friends or hanging out with your kids, right? It's really hard. So throwing in a couple a year, though, is part of the balanced diet, right? Everyone can throw in a couple a year, like local farmer's market, local brewery, local whatever festival you have in your town, like, right? right? And, mm -hmm. and, and when you do them correctly, which is not just sit in there with your work and hope somebody will come and talk to you. When you do them correctly, as you'll see in my piece, they're very, very effective, extremely effective. All right. Well, thank you very much. And yeah. look forward to, to joining you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Leonardo. Awesome. Give your, just write the check mentally, whether you sign up with us or not. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna go at this for three to five years and you're not going to stop. You're going to go at it for three to five years. Once you start like, you know, you know when you're like, you're, you're, I hate running, but I, I've run, what have I run? I've run like a 3K or a 5K, okay? I'm, I'm a fit. I'm an athlete and all that. I just hate the long distances. But when you have it in your mind that you're running a marathon versus when you have it in the mind you're running like a, a 3K mile, or let's, let's, let's take it out of that. When you're on a long drive, but you know the long drive is 10 hours versus you know the long drive is like two hours, it doesn't matter if it's a two-hour drive or a 10-hour drive. When you start getting close, you start getting like fidgety, right? Like on the two hour drive, you're like fidgety. You're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I'm getting tired. Versus it's a 10 hour drive. You're like, you're not even fidgeting until hour nine because you know you have all that, right? So like the, the perspective of just being like, and you know, people, sometimes people in my company get pissed off at me when I say this, but the, I, most people come to find out I don't sugarcoat anything. Um, the first couple of years suck. They suck. You have to learn how to market. You have to learn how to do a bunch of things you've never been able to do consistently. The reason you've never been able to do them consistently is because you don't like them. And I get that, right? Like you have to learn how to regularly and consistently post on social on how to email emails, how to, how to capture emails, how to run sales and go through that entire process. No one wants to do that. Everyone hates that. There's learning the technical part and everyone comes in with like a different level of technical acumen, right? So there's that learning curve, the computers and the phone and how does it all work and da, 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 da. But then also the hardest time is in the beginning. So when you set yourself up for the 10 hour drive, which in my estimation is three to five years, then you're like, year one, you don't even care. You're going to blow right through the thing. You're not going to look at your stats until the end of the year and you're like, okay, sweet. I did this. I got to double it next year, right? But when you do that, you set yourself up to succeed. And instead, what everyone does is like, I'm going to put, I'm going to do it. You know, I had a good month in my job. I'm going to put $1,000 in, in, into the Facebook and Instagram casino, and I'm going to see what happens. And they put it in there, and nothing happens, and they're like, marketing's worthless, and then they quit. And then two years later, they're like, ah, I really actually really want to make my art business go somewhere. So what am I going to do, right? So give yourself the time, you know? You're just getting started, but if you set it right in your mind, you're, you're going to be rolling. So that's what I would say. All right, I talked myself into circles. Yes, all of these links will all be in the email I send you after the fact. It'll be in, in very short order. Um, what else? The video, if you want to replay it, I don't know why we would want to do that. I'm probably pretty annoying. Is on Facebook. It's on YouTube. It's on everywhere else. So if for some reason you wanted to watch it again. And Fanny, you're going to be our last question of the day. Go ahead, Fanny. Hi. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, like, this has been awesome. Like, I've already learned so much. So I was wondering oh, if you. when you hold these meetings, do you uh, pretty much, is, are, is this, like, informational and... Is it the same stuff, or can we keep coming to learn new things? That's oh, no, the first no, question. No. Every single solitary one. The internal ones or these ones? No, the like something like this, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they vary. We mix it up all the time. Um, you know, Sometimes I just get fired up about one particular thing, and then I just go down the rabbit hole in one particular thing. Um, okay. But, yes, they're, they're pretty much mostly all different. Um, oh, great. great, <laughs> when, great. When, when I do it anyway. Sometimes when we're like – January is always a huge month because everyone is like – yeah, Emily's in here going, I've been coming to these for over a year. Do you see this in the chat? She's like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. And, and yeah, and, and Emma, I still owe Emily. I, still have, I told Emily I would buy something from her site, and she's making me feel guilty right now as I still have it. <laughs> um, January, oh, so we have so many people trying to sign up in January because New Year's resolution, this is going to be my year, right? So 
the the outreach team will run these demos and then it, it's the same thing every time essentially it's just like it's going to take you the tour of you know the whole software and everything but when it's me they're definitely they're definitely all new okay great um second question is i feel like like all right i love that i i i the quest sorry the questions that i had i feel like you're already answering like mm -hmm. all right here's a bunch of artists sounds like you got to hold their hands and then hold them accountable because they're just going to want to create and they're not going to be practical and correct. sell stuff so correct i feel like that's what we're already getting from you and i look i'm excited about that and i'm like i've been trying to i, I have like so many ideas right but i can't like the problem is settle down um focus out one <laughs> yeah. thing yeah focus yes. but it's like also get overwhelmed like okay i gotta work on the website i gotta do this blah 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 mm -hmm. so do you help with like planning um like for example all right this is uh you said like i can look at the stats and this is what's been working for you so let's um set up a calendar to i know you can like schedule posts and stuff like that right so is that do we get a lot of hand holding i guess you is do. the question yeah. you get you get we a ton do. I mean, to be honest with you, it starts, it starts with, it's like an umbrella is the, the only way I could explain it, right? On, on, on one side of the umbrella is like, you know, you don't know how to run, you don't know how to post on Instagram. So here's an article to go post on Instagram, right? Like DIY education. Then there's the in-person teaching. And then okay. there's technical support when you get stuck on things. And then there's in-person classes, the webinars. Then there is, you know, light harassment, right? Sometimes where it's like... <laughs> Uh, Thanny, what the hell is going on here? You haven't posted in two weeks. And you know, then, I love that because yeah. I've been wanting an accountability. Person, oh, you have to. It's, so. it, it's honestly like almost more important than the other pieces, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you'll 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 sit in a session, and there'll be like, you know, a seventy-nine-year-old mother that is so sweet, and she pulled something off that you haven't yet, and you're and you're sitting there looking at yourself, going, okay. She just ran a live art show and sold six pieces. What the hell is wrong with me, right? There's like group, you know, group rising tide and, and accountability and, co and community. And it takes all of those things. Like the, I hate that line, it takes a village, does it? Mm -hmm. it, it actually does, right? Like, yeah. you know, awesome. the, the mental stuff is, 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 is just as difficult as, as everything else is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Wonderful, thank you so much. And I already have a meeting with Stefan tomorrow, so. Awesome. I'm gonna get the demo. Thank awesome. you so much. Thanks, Fanny. What is the famous Fanny song? Take a load off, Fanny. Take a load for free, the band. What is that song? Up on Cripple Creek? Is it up? I think it's up on Cripple Creek. Something else. What is the song, Fanny? Hold on. Uh, now, I, now I need to know. Or I could just I'm unmute you again. Is it up on Cripple Creek? What is the name yeah. of that song? Someone, someone did. That was kind of recently that I heard about that. Take a load what? off. What? That's hilarious. You just heard about that? <laughs> You have a theme song, dear, and you just heard about it, and well, it's I awesome. Didn't, I didn't grow up in this country. I don't know if it was popular here. So. Oh, it was popular here. I mean, like, you know, 50 years ago or 40 years ago, but still, it's awesome. No, no, yeah. Terry, and, it's and not CCR. It's the know. band. It's the band. Okay, hold on. Because I'm in what? a mood. Just because I'm oh, in a mood. Oh, somebody knows? Okay, good. I thought, it, uh, Take a Load Off Fanny, I don't think is the song. I think the song is up on, what is that? Take a Load Off. Oh, somebody Fanny. sang it to me. Really? The, oh, it's, yeah, called, yeah. it's called The Weight. It's called The Weight. Join AARP uh, for $12. It's, it's going to get me in trouble if I play it.